Nothing But The Words, episode number 67, Measuring Your Book's Success. Welcome to Nothing But The Words, the podcast that gives you everything you need to know to write a phenomenal book. Now here's your host, your author coach, Candace L. Davis. Hey there, and welcome to Nothing But The Words. I'm your author coach, Candace L. Davis. I hope your week and your writing are both going well. Earlier this week, I was talking to a coaching client and her very last question for me was, how do I measure the success of my book? Now, she's really a numbers person, (laughs) much more than I am. So I was surprised by that question, but that led me to the topic for this episode. How do you measure whether or not your book has actually been successful? Now, to be clear, you're the only one who can determine what success looks like for you with your book, just as you're the only one who can determine what success looks like for you in any area of your life. But let me be honest with you about what I prioritize in whether or not a book is successful. The first and most important measure for me of the success of any book is a finished product you can be proud of. Writing a great book is such an investment of your time and your energy and your knowledge And at the end of that process, if you can look at your book and be proud of what you created, that is an absolute success. It's a personal success for sure. It's definitely a a sense of satisfaction that comes from creating something you can be proud of, but it also positions you to market and promote your book with confidence. That doesn't mean you have to write a perfect book that doesn't exist, But when you know you've created something of value, when you've written a book that keeps its promise to the reader, when you know you have poured into your book to make it the best it can possibly be right now at this stage of your writing life, you are much more likely to want to tell the world about it. So let's get into some of the other ways, maybe a little more concrete ways you can measure the success of your book. If you are seeking prestige, there's nothing wrong with that, by the way, I don't say that in a negative way, or trying to create an even higher level of credibility with your book, you might consider submitting your book to contests. There are lots of different uh, book awards available. The ones that you've heard of are probably not available to self-published authors, but there are plenty that are available to self-published authors these days. And awards from organizations that you care about and respect or organizations your audience will respect can confirm that you have created something of value and give you a certain amount of bragging rights, of course, but it also can give you a new marketing angle and introduce your book to a whole new audience. So the right awards can make a difference. And when they come from a reputable organization, they can also give you the sense that you've created something of value and worth. A third measure of your book's success can be bestseller status. Now, I hesitate to even include this on my list. It makes me nuts sometimes. So many authors overestimate the importance of bestseller status, and they get hyper-focused on being able to capture a screenshot where their book is number one in a subcategory, and they're so focused on that that they don't think beyond that and how they're going to market their book beyond just hitting that bestseller status. It can be a big deal right? But in most cases, authors are really hyping up bestseller status in a tiny little niche subcategory on Amazon. Now there's nothing wrong with running with that, right? If you hit that status, of course you want to talk about it, post it on social media, add it to your website, all of that good stuff. But the fact is that hitting that bestseller status isn't always what you think it is. Sometimes it's just an indicator that the book had very little competition on that day in that subcategory. I've seen people hit number one in a subcategory selling just 10 or 15 books in a day. So if you want to use bestseller status as a measurement of success, then we're not talking about the New York Times here. We're talking about these niche categories on Amazon. If you want to use bestseller status as a measurement of success, just be really clear about what it means and what it means to you. Is it about rallying a couple dozen people to buy your book on your book launch day? Perfectly fine, if that's what you want. Or is it about creating and investing in a strategy that allows you to sell hundreds or thousands or tens of thousands of books in a short period of time? 
because the author sitting on the top 100 bestseller list on Amazon or on the New York Times bestseller list have a strategy behind that success. It does not just happen miraculously. And you may not be able to compete with that, but you don't have to in order to have success with your book. Now, bestseller status sounds good, but I prefer best selling, meaning that your book continues to sell. I have clients who have sold tens of thousands of copies of their books over the course of a few years and have never made one of those top bestseller lists, but they have made tens of thousands of dollars, in some cases, hundreds of thousands of dollars with their books. So keep bestseller status in perspective when you're using it as a standard for your book success. Another way to measure how successful your book is, is by looking at the opportunities your book has created for you. Now, one of my clients who is a great speaker, she's really dynamic, was only speaking for free before she wrote and published her first book. Her audience is largely nonprofits and government agencies, and they were not paying her to speak at events. After she published her book and frankly marketed it very well, she not only started charging to speak, but the organizations were now reaching out to her instead of her chasing them. So your book can create new opportunities for you, opportunities to appear on podcasts, TV, radio, to speak on bigger stages, to raise your speaking fees. This can be a real success depending on what your goals are. Book sales are another area I encourage you to consider when you're measuring the success of your book. Now, I am the first person to say your book success is not all about book sales, but book sales can still be a clear cut way to assess how your book is doing. Look, while you can self-publish your book on any budget to do it well and produce a professional product does cost money. You're moving into at least four figures, right? By the time you get your book edited, you want to get professional design for your cover. You may need to do a photo shoot. You want to get professional layout design. Unless writing books is a hobby for you, which is perfectly fine. Unless it is a hobby though, all of those costs should really be an investment. And you want a return on that investment just as you would with any other investment. Earning back the money you invested and breaking even Just breaking even on your book, to me, that is a measure of success. And then everything else you make after that, of course, is profit and you can raise the bar on what your standard is. If your book is an authority piece that highlights you as an expert, then you might measure how many new clients and customers you get because of your book. Now, this could be difficult to measure because you don't always know where your clients and customers came from. But if you see a significant rise in the sales of your other products and services in alignment with your book sales and the people who are getting your book in their hands, then you probably are seeing some results from your book. And frankly, there are times when you can ask your customers where they came from. So it's often nice to hear that they discovered you through your book. Now, if one of your strategies is to give your book away as a lead magnet for your business, then you might measure the response rates you're getting from that. I have a client who does this brilliantly. He uses this strategy. He gives away thousands of books every year. Those books, though, only cost him probably around $3 to print. So he's already earned back all the money he spent to get the book edited and designed. Now they cost him maybe $3 to print. And he uses that book to lead people into his programs that are ten and $15,000 and more. So if he gets just one person into a program, he's fine. He's great. Giving away the book works really well for him. But the free book giveaway strategy is not for everyone. If you're using it, then what percentage of people who saw the offer for your book signed up to get the free copy? And then what percentage of them con- converted to sales? These are the types of things you might look at to measure your book's success. But again, that's not a strategy for everyone. My point here is that only you get to decide whether or not your book is a success. But I want you to do that by looking at the things that matter to you. I stand behind my belief that writing a book you're proud to have your name on, a book that provides value, it's not more noise in an already noisy world, but actually provides value and fulfills its promise, whether that promise is entertainment, education, inspiration, enlightenment, whatever the promise is. This is the first measure of success, a book that does what it says it's going to do. 
a book that you have poured into and made the best it can possibly be right now. We're not seeking perfection. We're just giving people the value that they're paying for. But beyond that, only you can decide what constitutes a win for your book. You may not care at all about accolades and awards. Many of my clients don't. They don't even bother submitting their books to those contests because they're not relevant to them. You might not have any desire to speak from the stage. Set the goals that matter to you and then go all in to achieve them. That's all for this episode, my friends. For more writing tips and inspiration, follow me on Instagram at Candace L. Davis. Thanks for listening to Nothing But The Words. I'm your author coach, Candace L. Davis, and I'll see you next time.